<clears throat> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTubers. This is Jerry Diamond with How to Get Out of Babylon. This ain't going to work very well unless I get this adjusted better, but I want you to be able to see my mouth because I'm going to read. If you can read the board, great. If not, don't worry about it. <clears throat> I'm going to start reading a little bit from The Enchanted Hour by Megan Cox Gourdon. G U R D O N. Sounds French to me. M E G H A N. Megan Cox. We're done. The miraculous power of reading aloud in the age of distraction. We're distracted. We're, you know, we're bewitched by, uh, we've been delirium. We're in a, we've been in the age of delirium. And that's the first book in my trilogy. Delirium, eight letters, four syllables, delirium. Eight letters, four syllables. Then you have refugium. No. Imperium. Eight letters, four syllables. Massively packed word. And then you have the last tr part of the book, the trilogy, is um, refugium. Eight letters, four syllables. Amazing. So, all power packed words. Crammed. I'm going to start reading that. I'll read a chapter from it coming up. Before long, hopefully. <laughs> okay. So this is... um. An amazing book. It's really got my attention because it is, you know, such an amazing thing that this woman, many years ago, before she started having, before she was even married, before she, I don't know if it was before she met her husband, but she, she did a friend's house and they were doing stuff and the woman says, oh, excuse me, I got to go. And she go, disappears and an hour later she's still gone. And then the lady says to her husband, is everything okay? Where did Lisa go? And she goes, oh, he's just, she's just reading to the son, to my our boys. And that filed a note in the woman's head, and she's like, Megan's head, and she's like, she's giving her son's priority in the family, you know, she's spending time with her sons. If I ever have children, I want to do that. So 30 years later or so, she's writing it for the Wall Street Journal and has an article, a uh, regular column, syndicated column, on reading aloud. So... The new science of storybooks, why printed books trump the screen, and why all children need and deserve the cognitive boost now. That's chapter one. Why, what reading does to children, what reading to children does to their brains, okay? This book had its origin in an article I wrote for the Wall Street Journal in the summer of 2015. The Great Gift of Reading Aloud, which emerged from two decades of nightly reading to my children. Let's see if I can get over a little bit more. And my dozen plus years as a paper's children's book critic. A few lines from the, she did reviews and stuff for children's books and other things. A few lines from the piece and others, from that piece and others for the Wall Street Journal survive in these pages. As do adapted excerpts from humorous family sketches that I wrote in the early 2000s. All my source materials are listed in the notes at the end. And in the, and in the acknowledgments, I name the people who generously shared with me their time and expertise. Any infelicities of data or interpretation of it will be mine, not theirs. <clears throat> the individuals who appear in these pages are all real. I have faithfully recorded their words, sometimes eliding or tidying, probably editing or tidying for clarity. She has eliding. I never heard of that word. But to protect privacy, I've changed many of their names. Lines of dialogue are as close to the truth as memory, digital recordings, and contemporaneous, note, contemporaneous notes permit. For simplicity, I often use the word parent to describe any given adult who reads to a child and trusts that all the aunts, uncles, cousins, brothers, sisters, teachers, babysitters, and lovely next-door neighbors who read to children will understand that, of course, I mean them too. Similarly, in the spirit of tradition, not to mention ease of reading, I use the pronoun he to describe any theoretical child. Ooh, boy, that's wrong. <laughs> She's gotten in trouble for that one, right? When a book mixes memoir and advocacy with science, history, art, and literature, as this one does, some ideas, thinkers, and events are bound to go unremarked and uncelebrated. I hope the reader will forgive these inescapable omissions. The same goes for the books that I discuss, and especially the lists of additional suggested titles at the end. These are not clinical, impartial, or complete guides to correct stories for reading aloud, but personal favorites of mine and my children. Other families will prefer other books, and why not? We don't live on Camazots, The Dark Planet in a Wrinkle in Time, where everyone has to conform. I read that book, I don't remember that. We can 
read what appeals to us and skip what doesn't. And that's as it should be. The important thing is to read out loud.